Hey guys, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. And as you guys know, I use Squarespace for my own website. And anytime somebody asks me what they should use for their website or for their portfolio, I always recommend Squarespace. In fact, right now, if you use the code Adam, you will save 10% on your website when you go to checkout. Adam Lerner, BrooklynPhotoWorks.com. And today I'm gonna take you behind the scenes on a photo shoot I did with a 1950 Alfa Romeo. Um, and I wanna share some of the mentality that I have for shooting automobiles and using lighting and working with an inanimate object as your subject that you are having a collaboration with. I've talked about this before. When I'm doing portraits with people, I'm collaborating with them. I'm working with them. The interesting thing about shooting with people is that there is give and take. You can talk to them, you can give them direction. When you're working with an inanimate object, you have to basically see things in that object or whatever it is and personify it. And then you have to move it and interact with it or move yourself around it in order to get the very best out of it. Okay, so here we go. Let's pop into the very first behind the scenes shot that I have that I took with the GoPro. So here we are, we're in a warehouse. We've got really, really crappy overhead lighting like those mercury vapor lights and fluorescence. Horrible. We've got a really ugly backdrop, like just a white um, concrete wall with some, some wiring back there. Um, there's all different kinds of like yucky, kind of ugly things back there. The, uh, the nicest bit about this is obviously the car and uh, the floor. The floor actually photographs incredibly well. So I knew that this was going to be probably the best spot for me to be in, stand, you know, standing in this position um, with the car, um, you know, kind of like centered on that back wall and then I was just going to rotate the car. Now, as you can see in the photo here, I've got a couple of uh, stands for lights. I actually got three, so uh, obviously I had the idea that maybe I'd use a third. I've got my tether stand over here and I've got my Faisal tripod over here for the camera. Now, the reason why I'm using a tripod is because I knew that once I had my camera position set, I wanted to at least be able to get all angles of the car at the same camera height, relatively the same um, focal length. That way I would have at least a consistent set of images. They're all shot in the same way. Now, it didn't mean <coughs> Excuse me. Now, it didn't mean that I was going to shoot everything in that way. It just meant that I was going to be able to have one set of images all shot consistently because I knew that I was going to be hand-holding the camera and um, shooting different angles, shooting from above on a ladder, shooting from the side, trying to get all different kinds of stuff, but also while maintaining that consistent level of um, or that consistent batch of images all shot at about the same height and focal length. Okay. So here we go. Let me show you guys another uh, behind the scenes. Okay, so here it is. Now we've got things a little bit more further along. I've killed the interior lights because even though I'm shooting with my own lighting, and um, I think I was shooting at like something like F8 or something like that, um, and I was probably killing most of the ambient light in there, I also knew that I did not want any of the, the these ugly lights or the ugly light, uh, the, um, the color temperature of these lights influencing any of my images because I wanted to keep a consistent color temperature um, and make the car look as best as it could. So you can see I'm standing over here. I've got my tether station set up. I've got the light on the tripod. I've got my, my two buddies there um, helping uh, move the car into position. And basically a lot of this is trial and error. You know, I, I position my lights, I take a frame or two, I come back and blah, 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 blah. And the whole reason for this are a few different things. Number one, I'm trying to light the car as consistently as possible relative to where the camera is. So I want the light to really wrap around the car and fall off really nicely. I don't want the floor to look overly lit. I also don't want too much fall off or too much spill going into that back wall because it's a white wall and white is reflective. That means that if light is being sent to that wall, it's gonna come back and it's gonna look like it's lit and I don't want that lit. So I want there to be some fall off. The, you know, now granted, if that was a black wall, I would be in a lot better shape because then I could I could be less wary of where my lights were positioned as far, relative to the back wall and the fall off. And that way the light would be absorbed by the black wall because black will absorb light, whereas white will reflect light. Okay, so the two things I'm keeping in mind is the, the, the way that I'm lighting the car, the wraparound, worrying about highlights, and also thinking about my back wall and also not trying to 
to flood too much light on my foreground because I don't want it to look like I'm, I'm lighting the foreground. I want the car to kind of almost stand out three-dimensionally on, um, on the screen when we're taking these shots. And I'm also thinking about camera position because as you guys can see, there's a ton of vehicles in this direction. There's like an ugly door over here, etc., etc. All right, cool. So now we've got another camera position. Um, and the way that I was kind of shooting it is I had my framing just in front of this yellow line. And the thing that was cool about the yellow line is that I used that as a guide mark so that I knew that no matter where we put the car, I could always kind of take the, the framing of the camera and use that to keep things straight and to keep things consistent. Um, what else can I tell you about this? Um, Here's another angle. The funny thing about this, this is a really cool shot, is that this um, shot must have been triggered at exactly the moment that um, I hit the shutter on the camera, which is very, very cool. Now, um, some things to think about with a car. Reflective, it's shiny, it's got all different kinds of curves. You don't want to have things looking too contrasty. I didn't want things to be too, um, too, 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 too shadowy. I really wanted that to, the car to look really fantastic. So let's go in and let's see what um, what I got here. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with um, I'll start off with some of the starred shots that I have in here, and that'll kind of give you a sense. Now I've gone actually. Let me do this. I'm going to just go with my starred shots. Okay. So what I've done is I've gone through here, and um, I've starred. I guess, okay, so let me slow it down a little bit, guys. When I do a shoot like this, I will go in and I will do a first pass, meaning I will go through and I will make my selects, and that's really gut instinct, meaning like these are keepers, these are not, these are keepers, these are not, and it's kind of like a cursory pass. And then I will do several more passes until I finally narrow it down to what I feel are the best, and sometimes it can come down to two or three very, very similar shots, um, and then if push comes to shove, if, you know, for example, if the client like says, okay, I need you to make the final selects, I will do that. But I like to give them choices if there's a little bit of similarity between shots. We did, I think, 471 shots, and I think I gave them 106 selects. And if you guys are interested in flash photography and off-camera flash photography, check out the Fronos Photo Flash Guide. If you go to fronosphoto.com flash guide, you can check it out right there. This is a three plus hour video guide that Jared and I did where we not only give you all of the basics and fundamentals of flash photography to give you the confidence to start using flash and off-camera flash, we actually take you on live actual photo shoots and show you the behind the scenes step by step all of our settings and how we achieve those results. It's really, really awesome. Fronosphoto.com slash flash guide. All right, so here we go. So as we're talking about, I'll make this more full screen. You know, here's your 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 fully um, your full side shot. You know, which again, because these were shot for the sale of this vehicle, we wanted to get all different sides. We wanted nice consistency. So you see how that is nice and consistent. We have really nice consistent lighting over here. Um, you know, then this is what happened when I jumped up on the ladder. And I don't know if you guys remember that shoot that I did with Tim Harney Motorcycles where we took his motorcycle and we went out and there was like a little kind of a light beam that was coming um, up from above when we were underneath that overpass and it was lighting the motorcycle beautifully. If we took the shot straight on, you saw the background which was like parked cars and other kind of stuff that was not very pleasing. But when I took it from like an overhead angle and I used the roadway to kind of surround the, the motorcycle and frame the motorcycle, you had a wonderful gradient of light and you also didn't have any distractions. And that's the same exact thing that's happening here. We've got this terrific light grid gradation going from light to dark in the background and there's nothing distracting in this shot. Now this shot, the, uh, the thing that you might notice is the interior has a little bit of light going for it. And what I did is in addition to the two Einsteins, because I had one using the Okta and one using the Fotex soft lighter as my, as my key and my fill light, um, I also uh, realized that the interior wasn't getting much love and the interior is very dark but there's some nice uh, elements to the interior. So what I did is I took a Cactus RF60X and I put it in optical slave mode and I just positioned it basically under this, this uh, B pillar over here so that um, it would basically just pop some light into that interior to kind of add a little bit of depth and dimension. And we'll just kind of keep going. 
Here, obviously, I'm hand holding. I'm getting like more of a close-up shot. This stuff over here, you know, I'll take my mouse. This obviously all can be photoshopped out of there. But again, I'm not shooting for the edit. I'm trying to shoot these as clean as possible. Here's another shot where I'm using the floor to frame the vehicle. I've got the light popping on the interior. Really, really nice. And again, this is this is a two light shot with a little bit of a, a speed light flashing onto the interior. There you go. Just showing all the different aspects of the car, the, you know, the really interesting door handle. Um, you know, again, you can see that these are these the interior is being lit by my my speed light in there, which I think is really cool. Um, showing the back end of the car. Now, when I showed the back end of the car, I believe I used a different. Um, let me just get out of this for a second. So here we go. If we look at this, this is shot at 24 millimeters, okay? Whereas most everything else was shot about, you know, 50, 50 to, you know, 50 millimeters, give or take, whatever. Um, and the reason for that being is because I knew that for a shot like this, when you're shooting the back end of the car, when it's so round and so bulbous, that um, I really wanted to be able to kind of accentuate that because I think that it looks really, really, really cool when you kind of get that kind of like really kind of like imposing bulbous shape on the background, on the back of the car. Um, all right, so yeah, so then we did some stuff where, you know, we had everything open, you know, all the doors and the windows, um, you know, which I think is really cool, you know, just kind of showing all the different compartments. Um, you know, we, I tried some verticals as well. They, they looked perfectly fine. Um, you know, the back end of the car, we did some interiors, um, all of this stuff, you know, lit very, very subtly. You know, we, we did, you know, close-ups of different bits. We did all the exploded bits that came with the car, you know, and, uh, the gauges, et cetera, et cetera. Very, very cool. So then what it came down to is I, you know, I came down to, you know, what I, I made my selects, let's say, and here you go. You got, you know, both sides of the car, you know, when it's sitting, you know, straight, um, You've got the three quarter angles of the car. Um, let's see, what do we have here? We've got um, this three quarter view, which was taken overhead with a, a little bit of a ladder with the interior lit. Um, we've got the, you know, the back of the car taken from overhead, which I think is really cool because you get to see all the lines and the little widow's peak. This is that kind of wider angled shot of the butt, which really shows off how bulbous that looks. You've got the really nice uh, lines going on over here. Another one of these overhead shots, which I really love, um, just, you know, showing the car sitting in there, you know, the front of the car and um, another front of the car from an overhead point of view and the gauges obviously which we really really like so there you go guys all right so there you have it when you're dealing with something like a car which is an inanimate object you are still having a collaboration so that means that you have to take it upon yourself to basically position yourself your lighting or that object in such a way to really show off the uh, the best that it has um, when I'm doing lighting with this kind of a thing, I'm not trying to over light it. I'm actually trying to keep it really subtle. I wanted it to have that kind of subtle vibe. I wanted the, um, the, the materials to kind of blend nicely or pop nicely, um, but integrate, interact nicely with that floor because the, the floor kind of accentuated some of the rusty kind of earthy tones in there, yet the car was very, very silver. So there it is. And um, I, I'm really happy with this and I hope that you guys um, can get something from it as well. So there you go, guys. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below.